This morning, we continue our conversation with the parents of Casey Anthony, who is awaiting trial in Florida for the murder of her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee. Cindy and George Anthony are speaking out for the first time since the discovery of Kaylee's body in December. Today, in this exclusive interview, they talk candidly about the investigation, their personal trials, and their unwavering support for Casey. Tell me about your daughter. What was she like growing up? Oh, gosh, Casey was just full of energy. And um, she was very inquisitive. She loved to read. She started reading at very early age. Um, George used to take her to the library, and she'd get four or five books every week, and she'd read them all. What kind of young lady did she grow up to be, George? Oh, very sensitive, I mean, very caring. Um, <laughs> the kind of daughter that any father is proud of. I mean, I'm proud of my daughter. And to watch Kaylee grow up, you know, like she did. I mean, she's like watching her mom being coming up again, watching my daughter grow up again. What are your fondest memories of Kaylee? Oh my gosh. I don't think we have enough time today so to talk right? about it. Oh man. Her goal was to make us smile and make us laugh. She was very sensitive. If, you know, I came home from work and she could tell I had a bad day, she'd grab my face and go, Cece, I love you. No. You know, I mean, that's just the type of child she was. How do you deal with her being gone? How do you fill that void? Oh, you don't. I mean, you don't, you, there's nothing that can fill that. Do you think that you have dealt with her death, the, the brutal reality of her death? Um, you know, we're dealing with it the best that we can. It's very hard, it's very difficult. You know, there's days that... Um, but do you allow yourself to think about that or is that something that you just need to block out of your mind? What happened to Kaylee? Well, we don't know what happened to Kaylee. Well, we know that she was murdered but we don't know what happened to her. That's the thing. What finally prompted you, Cindy, to call the police? I could, when I saw Casey, I could tell something was wrong. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Do you regret making that call? No. I don't regret anything I did. How can I? I don't know how I would react any differently. Um, you know, I know after I made the first 911 call, Casey thanked me in the car. Because she said I did something that she couldn't do, was to go to the police. What questions would you have for her? What has she not answered for you that you need to know? You know, I can't ask those questions. I can't, you know, I can't answer that. I mean, I had time with Casey to ask questions. Are you satisfied with the answers she gave you? You know, I'd love to know, I'd love to know more. Like what? I wanna know what happened. She claims that the babysitter snatched her? Yes. George, shouldn't she have reported her missing? Again, I, I, I can't say what my daughter was thinking, what she was doing, we just don't, we just don't know. Do you fault her for anything? How can we? We don't know what she's been through. I don't know what that girl has been through. I mean, George and I are living the same nightmare, but I don't know, and I can't judge George for certain things that he's done. You know, I understand certain things. I understand his suicide attempt. A lot of people don't know. I was there, too. I wrote suicide notes back in end of July and August. No one knows that. You did. Yes, I did because I couldn't bear not having Kaylee around and not knowing. You know, you get to a point when you miss someone so much that you think life's not worth living. And what kept you from going through with it? Actually, Casey. When Casey came home, the first time that Casey came home, the very first night, being able to see her and hug her. Have you been able to speak with Casey? Not since October 14th. Why? Unfortunately, we have laws in Florida where, you know, anything is up for grabs as far as media has access to whatever. So if we go in for a normal visit, it's going to be on videotape. She's not far. I know in my heart she's not far. I can feel it. We go to her hearings and, and get to see her. 
and she's really close to you, but you can't reach can't out and reach touch out her. Touch her. What's that like for you, George, to have her so close and not be able to to touch oh, her? Oh, it hurts. It hurts very much. You know, I want to be able to let her know that I'm here for you. I want to give her some strength. We haven't even had a chance to grieve with her. I have not been able to hug my daughter. What do you say to people who say the evidence is hard to refute? Well, I guess I can answer in one way is, has any case ever gotten all this kind of exposure? No. Um, and can I answer that? Sure, of course. Yes. The evidence is for trial. There's no evidence out there right now. What there's out there right now is discovery. There's reports, there's photos, but that's not evidence. What do you say to people who concluded that your daughter is guilty? She's presumed innocent. You know, the facts have not all come out. But people have said some, some things about her character. They've said that she was a liar and that was well documented. Why should people believe her now when her life is at stake? Well, her life is at stake. Do you feel that since you couldn't save Kaylee, at least you will try to save Casey? I don't know what we can do. You know, all we can do is stand behind our daughter. You know, that's all we can do right now. Unflinching support. Unflinching support. I believe in her. You know, there's some people that just say, well, we should just be done with it. Just, you know, like, kind of go like this and just be done with it. You can't. That's our daughter, you know. No matter what she no, may no, or may not have done? No matter what, that's still our daughter. That's no, no matter what. George and Cindy Anthony have created a foundation in Kaylee's honor to help other families of missing children get all the tools they need in their searches for their kids. As for Casey, they say that she spends her days in jail reading, mainly law books, and looking forward to the day which she is convinced will come that she is acquitted.